Hello, I'm David. And I'm Ben. As you know, you'll usually find us cruising around the world, but COVID's had very different plans for us. So we're going to be mixing things up from now on, and because COVID has hit us really hard, we're going to be expanding our horizon into loads of different travel videos. We're going to be taking planes, boats, buses, and cruises around the world to show you our favourite spots. We hope you enjoy our first ever travel vlog in Edinburgh. Hello and welcome to Edinburgh for this week's adventure. We're here in the capital of Scotland. And let me tell you, it is absolutely spectacular. We're gonna be spending a good 48 hours here experiencing the food, the culture, the amazing sights and scenery. So come along, what are we waiting for? So let's start our adventure in Edinburgh with a visit to one of the most idyllic villages we've ever seen. So we've just walked from the centre for about five minutes and we've came down to the water at the River Leith and we're in Dean Village. This is such a beautiful picturesque area full of storybook Victorian cottages down by the river. So it's really cute. I really recommend coming here uh, to get some beautiful photos. Gonna go the old school way. Hello. Dean Village is a tranquil green oasis on the water of Leith and it's a great glimpse into the past with history ranging back all the way to early 1100s but now it's a residential community of storybook Victorian cottages. Hope that person didn't mind us taking photos and videos of their boxes on the line <laughs> but it's really cute. It's really like walking through a movie set or something, isn't it, Ben? It is so cute. And I love all the cobblestones and everything, but be careful, because I've literally nearly tripped up a few times. Right, I'm getting a little bit hungry now, so we've got a fantastic restaurant lined up for tonight. I'm so excited, and you're going to be coming along with us. The Bon Vivant. I'm starving. Come on, Ben. Guys, we've made it like it was a trek. <laughs> we uh, got an Uber over to the Bon Vivant restaurant, which is where we're eating tonight. It's a restaurant that has high quality food, but it promises to have a casual atmosphere and it focuses on local food. So less of the talking, more of the eating, because I am starving. Aren't you, Ben? Starving. Starving. Let's go. It's a really actually a nice cool place. It is really relaxed. I know it said that online, but sometimes I say that and it's not, but it's actually really relaxed in here. It's nice and cozy, it's got a candle going. It's very romantic, isn't it? So our starters have arrived and I've got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous. So Ben went for the Serrano, Serrano ham croquettes and I went for the haggis balls. Haggis ball, haggis balls? Is that what they're called? Haggis bonbons, I think. Sounds a bit classier than haggis balls, doesn't it? Oh my god, they're actually delicious. It's kind of like a black pudding, but sweeter and crispy. I've got to say I'm a little bit nervous because I've never ever had haggis before. And if you don't know, it's like sheep's stomach and some of the parts of sheep. Ready? Steady. Ooh, oh that's real. It's really good, isn't it? It tastes really familiar. Oh my gosh, it's real. Oh, it's like a proper burst of flavour. Oh, it's lovely. Hey, look at me eating haggis. You would never think so. What are you doing? Let's try Ben's uh, Serrano croquettes, get a bit of the sauce on. Mm. Oh my God, they're amazing. In the UK and Scotland, obviously, on every Sunday, it's a big thing to have a Sunday lunch. A bit like Thanksgiving in the USA. This looks huge. We've got roast potatoes, roast belly pork, a Yorkshire pudding, roasted carrots. Oh my gosh, it smells divine. Less talking, more eating. It was absolutely delicious. I even said if, if it was more acceptable, I would have licked the plate afterwards because like just the gravy and everything was delicious. And I never thought of having like a cod on a Sunday dinner and it worked really, really well. It was like salty and crispy. It was so, so good. Right, I think it's time we're gonna order dessert next.
Guys, honestly, that was possibly one of the best meals I've ever had. It was incredible. Highly recommend it if you come into Edinburgh. And it wasn't too pricey, it wasn't too stuffy. It was about, for both of us, it was about £55 for two starters, two mains and a dessert and a couple of cocktails. Such good value and it was amazing. Really do recommend it. Now we are, we, do you know what? We could lie and say we're going out for a few drinks but we're pogged so we're going to head back to the hotel and chill out. Let's go. After a good night's sleep, we're ready to enjoy our second day of Edinburgh. So one of the best modes of transport to get around Edinburgh is by bus, but it's cobbled street, so it's a little bit bumpy. So if you see me waving about, you know why. But it's super cheap. I think it was four pounds each for a day pass to use all around the city of Edinburgh to get to places like the Ocean Terminal and into the city, but it's fantastic. Plus the bus tells you what the next stop is. So you don't have to worry about missing it. It's awesome. And the ticket's on your phone as well, so it's super easy. And you can use it on the trams as well, which is a really good way of getting around. There's more listed buildings in Edinburgh than anywhere else in the world, with a whopping 75% of them being listed. And it might look familiar too, because lots of Harry Potter is actually based on Edinburgh, where it was mostly written. So just behind us we have Oink. This is one of the favourite places to eat in Edinburgh. It's just a takeaway and it serves delicious hog roast sandwiches. So beautiful pork sandwiches in three different sizes, piglet, oink, and grunter if you want a really big sandwich. Let's go try it out. Cool, let's go, let's tuck in. Oh, oh my gosh, that is so good. Oh, that's amazing, it's really salty and delicious. But then it's got the sweetness from the apple as well. Yeah, delicious. <gasps> Definitely, if you're coming, you've got to try one of these. So this is the Royal Mile. It's got to be one of the most famous places in Edinburgh. It's a mile long. Well, actually, it's not. It's actually one mile and 120 yards long. So these little cheetahs, but we've really enjoyed it here. It's all cobbled streets. It goes all the way from Edinburgh Castle at the uh, top all the way down to Holyrood Palace at the bottom and that's obviously where Queen Elizabeth II stays while she's in Edinburgh. Here on the street you're going to find loads of things, bars, restaurants, try some haggis or some nappies and nappies? Natties and tatties? I forgot what they're called. I forgot what they're called. Nips and tatties. You know what I mean guys. But yeah you can try some authentic food. You'll find shops selling loads of Scottish things like tartan and it's just a lovely place to come and relax all day long into the night as well. It's really buzzing. And what you always hear here is somebody playing the bagpipes as well. So we're going to go and have a little explore. So come with us. So one thing that you do need to be aware of here in Bonnie, Scotland, in Edinburgh in particular, is that it's very hilly. So you're going to be doing lots of stairs. We're actually walking up to a place called Calton Hill now which offers some spectacular views all across the city. Whilst you're sat down on your living room seat or on a train or even on the toilet, I'll do these stairs for you because I need the exercise. Come on then, let's go have a look. Oh, come on, David. So we got to the top of Carlton Hill. It was a bit of a trek, but it was worth it. It was only about five minutes, but there is a lot of stairs getting up here. But I can say, coming up here, it's really, really worth it. You get an amazing 360 degree view of the whole city. We were told that it's really popular with locals, particularly around Hogmanay, to see all the fireworks. And I bet it's quite a romantic spot up here, actually. I bet there's been quite a few dates up here. Carlton Hill's also famous for its collection of national monuments. There's quite a few around here. Uh, there was one that was famously built uh, to look like the Parthenon, but they didn't have enough money to finish it, so it's only half finished. So we're right at the top of Carlton Hill right now. As David said, it is really spectacular. Behind me, you can see Edinburgh Castle. Did you actually know this was built on an extinct volcano? I had absolutely no idea till I looked it up. It erupted over 700 million years ago and the lava apparently went all the way down the Royal Mile. And whilst we're up here as well, you can see how green Edinburgh is as well. It's actually one of the greenest places in the UK with 112 different parks. It really makes it look stunning. This is an awesome place to visit. You can literally see right from the city all the way to the port. Uh, it's a fantastic view. 
David as all that walking made you hungry because I am starving and we're going somewhere super delicious for dinner. You could say it's a Scottish delicacy. You might not think it is, but it is. So we're going to head all the way back down, back to the hotel, get changed and go get us some food. So come on. We then headed for a delicious meal at Makar's Gourmet Mash Restaurant. Yes, a mash restaurant. And it was absolutely fantastic. We really do highly recommend it. I had the leg of lamb and David had the gammon. We then finished off with the most scrumptious banoffee cake. Mm, yum. So that's it for our time in Edinburgh. It was short but sweet. We had a fantastic time. There is so much that we haven't seen or done, so we can't wait to come back to Edinburgh. But right now, we're actually going to get the coach up to Inverness, where we're going to explore Loch Ness. So make sure you subscribe for our next couple of episodes, because we can't wait to show you the rest of our UK tour. Right, we better go.